What's up everybody? Jameson Redding here with the Road Trip Angler. In this video, I want to review my Saltmarsh Heron 18. I also did a complete walkthrough of how I had my boat rigged, so you can check that out on the channel as well. But this is specifically going to be a review and my thoughts about the Heron 18. Saltmarsh is a family owned business and this is the largest boat that they have in all of their lines. And I really wanted to get this boat because I needed something that I could take my family out on. I have two kids and my wife, so four of us could get on this boat and still go out and have a great day. Now, that's not saying that you couldn't take four people on a couple of their other boats, but this was a lot bigger skiff and just had a lot of the features that I was looking for. I'm gonna start out with just a little bit of, of background on what I think this boat is designed to do because it really does matter. And this is no different if you're picking out a kayak or a big boat, where you're gonna be fishing and the type of fishing you're gonna be doing is what should dictate what boat you get. And this particular boat is designed to get you shallow but be able to handle some bigger water. The boat comes in at 18 feet, six inches long. It has a beam of 77 inches here at the widest point of the deck. And it's gonna draft somewhere between eight to 10 inches, depending on how you have your boat rigged. So you kind of start with some standard features and then you kind of pick what you want everything down to the color of the deck, the color of the hole. You can put your own electronics. I have a trolling motor here, you see. My boat is particularly pretty rigged out and as it sits right here would be about 51 to $52,000. So I really can't tell you where this falls price wise because it's gonna depend on what you put on the boat. All right, let's jump into some things here. Let's talk about the speed, the stability, the value of this boat and just overall durability. Now, I've had this boat for probably close to two years now. So I actually have put some hours on this boat. And so far I can say that durability wise, I've had zero issues with it. So far, knock on wood, everything has been great. All right, let's talk about stability. I can walk around this boat and most people that I have fished with can walk around this boat all the way down the gunnels. Now it is gonna rock a little bit. It's not a super flat bottom boat that's super wide and it does have a little bit of E to it. So I feel like this boat is super stable for its size and for what it's designed to do. Well, what's up everybody, future Jameson here. I got home, started looking through the footage and realized that I didn't even talk about fishability. If you're looking for a fishing boat, fishability is probably gonna be pretty high up on the priority list of features that you want in a boat. So to cover that pretty quickly here, I mean, the boat is fishy. A couple of things that I think really help in that department are number one, it's very quiet on the pole. It doesn't have any hole slap. I'm able to sneak up on fish, even with the trolling motor and get really close to them. And we did that on, on that trip in Louisiana and we could get right up on the fish so it was very quiet. The other thing about it that makes it very fishy to me and fishable is that you have tons of deck space. Even with the platform, you can have someone on the platform, someone standing behind them, and then you can also have people on the back of the boat because you do have this expansive deck space behind the seat as well. You can even fish up to four people on this boat very comfortably. Uh, riding on the other hand, you know, just depends on where you're going and what you're trying to do. Last thing I wanna say about fish abilities, I really like how the rod holders are set up in this boat too. The rod tubes are actually in the back of the boat, meaning that your reels and your handles are gonna be towards the bow of the boat. So if you're standing on the deck of the boat and you wanna switch rods or pull a rod out, it's, and I can do that very easily from the bow of the boat where I'm primarily gonna be fishing from. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to past Jameson since I think I've covered that one thing that I forgot. Speed wise, you can put anywhere from a 60 horsepower motor up to a 90 horsepower motor on the back of this boat. Luckily on this trip, we actually were able to see kind of the side by side what the difference was. Now, the reason you would want maybe to put a 60 horsepower versus a 90 like I have is because it's gonna give you less weight on the stern of the boat and that will give you less draft. So you're able to get a lot shallower and it may sound like not a lot when you're talking a couple inches, but a couple inches when you go from 10 to eight inches in draft is a big deal because you might need to get just a little bit shallower to reach those fish sometimes. So a lot of people that are doing a lot of flood tide fishing might wanna consider the 60 horsepower motor. 
The difference between the 90 that I have and the 60 horsepower that was on the other boat, that was Jose's boat, that boat was running in the mid 30s. So I saw it go anywhere from 33 to 35, and they said they even hit 37 here. And that just really depends on the current and the tide and whether it's pushing you or you're going into the wind and the current. But they're right there in that 35 range. And he said, even loaded down with his family, he has two kids as well, that he's able to run about 33 to 34 miles per hour. I can touch 40 miles per hour with the 90. However, I do have some RPMs left on the gauge. So I know if I play around with the height of my motor where it's set right now, it's pretty low. So I'm thinking about raising the motor to see if I can get a little more out of it. And I can also play around with the prop because right now I just have the stock prop that came on the boat. But because of the way his motor is set up, I actually think he was riding a bit smoother in the chop than I was. And that could be just the extra weight on the back giving me more bow lift. And it was, you know, riding a little different than his boat was. So I was really impressed with what his boat was able to do speed wise and how it was able to handle stuff with the 60 horsepower motor. I'm still happy with the decision to put the 90 on there because I do like having the little bit of extra power and the little bit of extra speed. And I was able to actually back down to about 5,000 RPMs when he was running wide open. So I was not burning that much different in gas than he was. And talking about gas, the capacity in this is 22 gallons. So I'm actually able to stay on the water for quite a while and we ran 100 miles the other day that's what his gps said that we had covered on his boat and we both still had several gallons of fuel left when it comes to storage i feel like there's tons of storage on this boat i mean you've got the big bow hatch up front i can put a lot of things in there even though i have my trolling motor batteries in there and the gas tank is sitting right behind the bow hatch in the back of the boat i have three storage compartments one of them is technically the live well but you can actually plug that and use that as storage as well but i keep all my tackle on one side and kind of my tools a couple of towels just things that i need on the other side the cockpit area is a little tight but you're really not spending a lot of time there that's just where you're going to be driving so typically i would have someone sitting on the bow here uh, or sitting in front of the console on my cooler and then two of us can sit behind the center console now when it, with my kids they can both fit on the cooler side by side so storage and capacity i really think that i can fit everything that i need and a lot of times probably more stuff than i need to be honest now one of the cool features when it comes to actually pulling this boat and i guess this would be in the maneuverability standpoint is that it actually has a radius transom and what that allows the water to do is just kind of wrap around the boat instead of trapping water like kind of like an eddy in a river and it releases off the boat very smoothly. Now I'm told from Salt Marsh that that allows the boat to turn and pull like a much smaller skiff. And I can say from experience pulling this boat and owning the smaller boats like the 1444 in the past and pulling my buddy's boats like the Heron 16, that I really don't feel like it's that much harder to pull. Of course, it's not as responsive as a 14 foot boat, but it actually tracks really nice. And I feel like it does pull like a much smaller boat the other thing I would say is from a driving standpoint, the maneuverability is amazing. I mean, this thing is locked onto the water and it really does handle very well. I feel like this boat is pretty simple. Like you don't have to mess with it a whole lot. Once you kind of get it set where you want it with the trim tabs, you just kind of can forget it and just drive the boat. You don't have to think about it too much and you're not having to stay on those tabs like I've had to do in other boats. All right, let's talk about value. I mentioned earlier that this boat would probably come in right out 51 to $52,000 as it sits. And that might sound like a lot of money for an 18 and a half foot boat. But when you compare it to other skiffs that are like it in the market, most of those boats are gonna be anywhere from 70 to $100,000 in this size category. This boat does everything and probably even does some things better than a lot of those boats and your value is just really there. In fact, that's what really led me to Salt Marsh in the first place, is I felt like when it comes to value in a skiff, they really put a lot of time and effort in designing the whole shape and making sure the boat is gonna perform the way it needs to. And then they keep that price point down compared to other brands. Just to quickly wrap it up, I think the boat's stable. I think it's plenty fast enough. It handles my family of four. It handles chop really well. It's a dry ride, has plenty of storage. So if you're in the market for a boat that can get you really skinny, but also cover some ground, a pulling skiff to chase those fish on the flats, I think this is a good place to start. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review. 
Road Trip Angler would like to thank our global partners for helping support the mission to get people outside and on the water.